Right, so today we're going to be having a look at some uh, particles and how we can use events within them um, to trigger off other particles or whatever else other things we want to do. Um, so I just have a couple of the starter template um, particles from the starter content. Uh, there's the explosion and this looping fire uh, and I'm just going to make it so that the sparks from the explosion when they hit the ground they spawn off uh, a little flame. Um, so let's get started. Right, so just opening up the explosion. Um, if we have a look, the sparks are GPU sprites. Well, that doesn't work for us. So if we have a look in the event tab here, we can receive events to a GPU sprite, so we can kill them all uh, or spawn them off. Um, but we can't generate an event via the GPU sprite. So I'm just going to create a duplicate and then turn off the GPU ones and then just edit this. So if I delete that GPU, these are now CPU sprites, but you'll notice the collision node no longer works because that's losing the GPU collision so it's using scene depth so we want to turn on actor collision and then these are now just hitting they're not doing any colliding why not so by default the maximum number of collisions is set to one so as soon as they collide they die it's not very helpful for bouncing sparks we set that to two and three now we're getting some collision but they're freezing in place that's because we're not saving any of the energy so this damping factor up here this is how much of the energy do we want to retain currently we're at zero so that's not much good so if I put in 0.5 and then it'll be 0.25 you can see that they're bouncing and losing some of their energy when they hit the ground um, great so that's our collision with our sparks back again um, but now I want to create this little puff of flame when this collision happens so if I right click and go back to the event again I can now have access to an event generator. Um, event generator here. Uh, we can add an event. So uh, this type is going to be a collision event. You can tell it to use any. Um, you can have events that trigger on spawn, death, collision, burst, or via blueprint. And in this case, it's going to be a collision event, and we give it a name. So I'm going to call it Spark Collision. Spark Collision. There we are. I might just copy that. I'm going to need to type that in somewhere in a minute. Um, so now I want to get to some fire, don't I? I want to get these flames in here. So um, you can, if I can select the emitter, um, if I open up the ooh, not static mesh editor, if I open up this emitter, um, you can export um, emitters from one system to another. So if I select my explosion in the content browser and then go up to my flames here right click again I can do an export export emitter and what that will do will just copy all this data um, and paste it effectively in here um, still not quite doing what we want um, these flames are just spawning in a sphere it looks like uh, yep um, around this, the origin of this, this emitter so I'm just going to set the default spawn rate down to zero and I'm going to use an event to, to spawn them. So if I go in here, event, event, receiver, spawn. And now I can tell it it's a type of event is a collision event. And I'm going to give it that same name that I copy and pasted. And how many sprites do I want to spawn? Well, let's say five per impact. Well, it's quite a lot, but hopefully you can see the, the effect we're getting. Um, that's kind of cool. Slow that down slightly. Um, and now wherever those sparks hit we're getting little bursts of flame um, maybe visually not the best result for they, they kind of don't work together but hopefully the uh, the, the process that we've been through uh, makes sense and you can see how you can kind of make some cool kind of dynamically um, spawning particles um, obviously these flames there's smoke there's embers it's a looping effect um, all these sprites here are kind of one-time things and like those smokes and embers and the little backup details don't exist here so um, we could copy them across and maybe set up some kind of internal logic in cascade but be much easier if we could just spawn this particle where those collisions happened and we can we could do it via a blueprint so if I open up the level blueprint you can do it via the level blueprint or uh, an actor blueprint or however you like um, if I select this particle system here the explosion and then right click and type in collide there's an event dispatcher here add on particle collide so this event is going to trigger when those uh, 
when that event would trigger. So if I just, for example, do a print string and just print off the event name, if I click play now, it should. And then maybe have to be somewhere I can see it. Let's just get rid of the player. Okay, so it is working. Um, very, very quick though. Uh, sometimes the collisions will happen before the actual viewport is loaded. So what I'm going to do is just going to create a reference to this emitter and a quick timeline. Which I'm going to make looping and auto playing. I'm going to have an event track in it and just say every every time you loop. And I want, let's say, a three second loop. I want activate. Mm -hmm. Activate, reset. And I need something in here. An update so it actually does something. Hey, here we are. Well, that doesn't work, does it? Let's not print nothing. Um, let's just do a sequence. Uh, if you have a timeline with an event track but nothing in update, then nothing works. It just, just decides not to play it. Um, I could play here. You see nothing's happening because it doesn't feel like it needs to, which is a little niggle. So if you just check in a sequence or something that does nothing, um, I don't know, a branch with no inputs and outputs, um, now it knows that there's something to do even though it actually it's not doing anything and this is the bit that's doing the work but right now we can see oh, I get my mouse back in the viewport um, we're re-triggering that explosion every few seconds and when the sparks are colliding we're getting a printout to screen of that event name that we had so um, if we have a look at our event down here um, we've got time, location, all this kind of stuff um, but location is the one we want to use we can just do a uh, spawn emitter, if I can spell emitter, spawn emitter at location, location is going to be that, and the emitter is going to be the fire. Uh, sad content, people there, yep. And now, hopefully, if I click play and I get my explosions, oh, I only got one. What did that happen? Wait for the loop. There we go. Uh, there is a collision distance. It's going to get more and more fiery and more and more bad for my GPU, isn't it? Um, so yes, there is a collision distance. If I go a long way away from this explosion, um, we're not getting particle collisions. Cascade thinks in here um, that because it's so far away, it doesn't want to do all those calculations. So there's some performance settings here. Max collision distance is a thousand units, which is do that to centimeters 10 meters so if I'm more than 10 meters away those collisions aren't happening if I redo that now we can see we're getting lots of fires spawned from the spark locations of our emitter um, be careful obviously if I go into some performance views um, we're spawning a lot of sprites and obviously this is looping so it's spawning more and more so uh, it's um, quite easy to go over the top but um, hopefully that shows you how you can uh, trigger off things from either within the same emitter using events or in the world using the events so um, hope that's helpful as always questions comments etc um, email me below uh, and yeah I'll see you all next time